Yeah, so we, we can verbally harass them. Peer pressure was into it. Oh. All right. Here we go. So this is some sort of a curve. Okay. They give you the first derivative so you don't even have to do the Nate Ricky. Yeah, well, too bad. You don't even have to do the first derivative for implicit differentiation. They do it for you. Okay? So, there's three things you need to do. There's three equations that you need to solve simultaneously. x cubed plus xy equals negative 2 is the first equation. Okay? If the curve is horizontal, if it's a horizontal curve, that means the numerator has to equal 0 and the denominator cannot equal 0. Okay? So you set the numerator equal to 0 and the denominator not equal to 0. Okay? Now, <coughs> let's solve for an equation. Well, there's no solving for that. So we're going to solve this one. So what is y equal to? Negative 3x. negative 3x squared. Very good. And then we're going to put the negative 3x squared in for that y. We're going to do substitution. So we're going to go x cubed plus x times negative 3x squared equals negative 2. So x cubed minus 3x cubed equals negative 2. So negative 2x cubed cubed equals negative 2. So x cubed equals 1. Okay, so what is x going to equal? 1. Now, does x not equal 0 if it's 1? Yep, it checks for that one. Okay, so... 1 is your x value. What's your y value going to be? Well, if you put 1 into this equation, negative 3 times 1 squared is 1 minus y equals 0. So y must equal negative 3. So it's a point 1, negative 3 is where the curve is tangent to the curve is horizontal. Yes? Did you just plug in the 1 back into the y I could, yeah, I should have done it right there. Okay. On this one, you have your equation here. So, on this one, your other two equations are 2 times x minus 1. Since we're tangent to the curve of the y-axis, you need a vertical line. So, what do we always say the denominator cannot be? Zero, because um, it makes a number that basically is a vertical line. So, basically, we set the numerator not equal to zero and the denominator equal to zero when we do a vertical line. So, when it's vertical, you do just the opposite. When it's horizontal, set the numerator equals 0, set the denominator not equal 0. When it's vertical, do the opposite. The numerator not equals 0, the horizontal, and the denominator equal to 0. What are our two numbers that will make the denominator equal 0? Y equals 4 thirds, and Y equals 4 are two numbers, right? Okay, if we put a 4 into each of these, Or four thirds into here. That's not going to make zero, is it? If we put a four in here, that's not going to make zero, right? <coughs> so let's put four thirds into this top equation. Okay? So if we put four thirds into the top equation, so we go four thirds cubed minus eight times four thirds squared plus 16 times 4 thirds plus x squared plus 2x equals 0. Okay? 
So, four thirds cubed is 64 twenty sevenths minus this is eight times 16 ninths. This is 64 thirds plus x squared plus 2x equals zero. Um, hmm. So this is 64 twenty sevenths. We multiply top and bottom of this by three. That's 48 times eight. What's 48 times eight? 96 times four. So that's 384. You didn't even try doing that, did you? You did? Good. What's nine times 64? Nine times 64. 396? What? 576. Oh. <laughs> All right. So what's 64 minus 384 plus 576? I don't know what it is. Because that would make my brain hurt. 256 over 27. So x squared plus 2x plus that equals 0. Ooh, that's just nasty. What's 256 divided by 27 just to get a ballpark fraction answer? Like 9-ish? 9.5-ish. And two numbers. Hmm. Yeah, that's kind of ugly. Let's see what four does to this. <laughs> let's just see what, because I got to, I had four or that. So let's try four right now. So four cubed minus eight times four squared plus 16 times four minus x squared. Oh, that's a negative x squared. Minus x squared plus 2x equals 0. So we get 64 minus 128 plus 64, right? Minus x squared plus 2x equals 0. So this all cancels out. So negative x if we factor out a negative x we get x minus 2 equals 0 so x must equal 0 or x must equal 2 well if x is 0 or if x is 2 if we put that into there okay i'm missing something here Because if x is 1, then that makes it 0, where it's, where the line, find the y-coordinate of the point where the tangent line, the line tangent to the curve, is the y-axis. Oh, x has to be 0, because the y-axis is at 0. So x has to be 0. So if you put 0 into x of this equation that gets rid of this why can't you just put one in for x and then one minus one would be zero times two would still be zero see what i'm you know what i mean up on that if we put in this we get zero just put in one put in one put in one Zero and negative two for that. So, well, we need zero in for this. Because X has to be zero because it's on the Y axis. So X has to be zero. 
And so if x is 0, <coughs> that works for this equation. And then if we put a 4 into here, it makes 0. But if we put a 4 thirds in here, it doesn't make 0. So y equals 4 is the only possible way thing it could be. Okay? So the answer to that would be 4. Because 256 does not equal 0, so it can't be the 4 thirds one. All right, one more. Okay. Vertical line. What's the equation of the vertical line? So a vertical line equation is going to be x equals something. Okay? So your numerator cannot equal 0. Your denominator has to equal 0 because it's a vertical line. Okay? So if you set your denominator equal to 0, x equals 0 or y equals negative 5 halves. Okay? If you put this equal to 0. Okay? So... If x equals 0, and if we put 0 into this equation right here, does do we get a 0 here and a 0 here? Does that make 50? No. So x cannot equal 0. But y equals negative 5 halves is not a vertical line equation. Okay? So we put negative 5 halves in there and figure out what x is. So x times negative 5 halves squared plus 5 times x times negative 5 halves equals 50. So 25 fourths x plus a negative 25 halves x equals 50. So this is 25 fourths x minus 50 fourths x equals 50. So negative 25 fourths x equals 50. Okay? See where those numbers just work their way down. Okay? Now how do I get x alone? Multiply by 4 25ths. So negative 25 x equals 200 divided by negative 25 x equals 8, negative 8. So x equals negative 8. If you stick negative 8 into this function, well, y, it doesn't matter. Um, y equals negative 5 halves will make this not equal to 0. So it checks for this equation. Checks for that equation if x is negative 8 and y is negative 5 halves. So x equals negative 8 is the equation of the vertical line. That's tangent to the curve. Okay, so this takes a little bit. You got to have three equations. Okay, you got to solve three equations simultaneously. So do your best on this. I'll be around to help. I'll be on my wheelie chair, wheeling back and forth up the aisle. I have a feeling.